So this is my uh, drop shelf here where I kind of go and always scavenge for uh, a piece of material to make a project. I've been digging around and I found this piece right here. This is actually, this should be stress proof. I can always tell because it has a darker color than just standard 1018 cold roll. And I'm pretty sure that that is going to be stress proof. What I'll do is I'll go to lay, then I'll just make a face cut on it. It'll, it'll confirm because stress proof uh, or 1144 is the grade is a free machining material. So it's going to chip a lot easier than uh, a gummy material like 1018. So I'll just verify that it's bigger than what we need because it's inch and a half, but I don't have a smaller piece in there of stress proof. And that's what I want to use. Uh, this piece right here, that's just regular cold rolled right there. So it's going to be gummy. Uh, stress proof is a great material for making component parts. And that's what we're going to be doing. I got another big piece of it standing up there. That's always the indicator too. It's got that, that color of paint sprayed on the end of it. So I really wish I had a much better inventory of drop and just random different size materials, but this is all I got to work with right here. We'll put it in the chuck and see if we can verify it. I'm pretty sure that is stress proof right there. Oh yeah, a lot finer chip. A lot finer chip than what you would get from a, like a 1018. Yeah. All right, so that's gonna be, that's gonna be our piece of stock that we'll use to make our new lead screw there. It's a little bit longer we need, so I'll be able to, we'll be able to just chuck it up. I'm probably gonna cut the out, we got a hole drilled on both ends there. So we'll, uh, we'll leave, we're gonna leave it big on one end because my plan is to actually, we're gonna do all of our fine turning over here on the Victor because it's gonna just be a little bit easier to do here. And I think we're gonna go to the Monarch to uh, do our Acme threading. Just go ahead and clean the face up and now we'll go ahead and <clears throat> pull the shaft out at the length that <clears throat> length that we need and what I'm going to do is go ahead and turn it all the way back to probably about this area right here probably turn it to there our, our three-quarter diameter so we want to stick it out about 10 inches and then you'll cut the center in the end after you chuck this I don't ever I don't ever machine the center with it like this up close because once you pull this out, it's gonna throw it off some. So I like to chuck the material just like I'm showing here. Let it chuck it in its natural position and then machine the center in the end so that it's running true with what it's chucked right here.
We're getting close. We should have about an eighth of an inch still to come down, going from one and a half to three quarter. So just taking uh, one eighth passes each time. So yeah, we've got about a hundred, about a hundred and twelve thousandths. Get, right now we're getting about one thousandths taper from uh, from end to end there. That should straighten up as we get down to our finished cut. So I think what we'll do, we'll take one more rough cut across here, and then we'll split our finish into two passes. That way they make it uh, you have equal tool pressure on our finished cuts. All right, we're going to slow our feed rate down to five thousandths. It should leave us about 20 thousandths to uh, remove. So we'll probably take a 10 and a 10. So we've got 25 thousandths to come off. So I'm going to split it. We'll take a uh, 12 thousandths pass and then mic it. And we'll, we'll just bring it down to exactly three quarter and let it be there. All right, this is gonna be our finished pass. All right, so we've got it turned where I want to. We're gonna go ahead, I've got a radius tool in here. This is 3 16 wide, full radius insert. So what we're gonna do is the undercut here, which is what we'll have to have because we're gonna be doing a left-hand thread. So we're cutting from the left to the right. So we'll go ahead and undercut. This is quarter inch, so it's a half inch diameter down in the bottom. And that'll suffice too for the Acme thread. So we'll just go ahead and uh, come down here and do a nice wide undercut there, a thread relief so we can start our thread using my 12 inch hook rule, set the uh, location there to hook the edge of the insert, line up the end of the shaft right there, right there on it. Move it down an eighth of an inch, 125 thousandths. That'll bring us to our 3 sixteenths width on the factory shaft. You guys see how nice that stress proof machines? Gotta love a free, she uh, free machining material. Makes it a joy to cut. All right, that's 240. Go ahead and clean up the center here. What I'll do is go ahead and let's go in another 10 and then turn it to the other side. Easy does it. There's our undercut. And on the end of the shaft, I want to do a nice big chamfer there. Let's see. Speed this one up. So, something along that line right there. Break these edges off as well. I left that 
one thousandths big, so we're just using some 220 emery paper and just polishing it down, and that'll make it look real nice too. Oh yeah, right there on it. Still has a little bit of warmth to it too, so it might shrink a few tenths as well. That's pretty much there though. All right, I wanna show you guys the tool we're gonna to use to machine the thread there. So I have invested in carbide insert and we've got a new tool holder here as well. A Couple of reasons why I went this route. For one, I want some new tools for the American pacemaker, but I can also use the, uh, the one inch shank on the uh, Monarch as well. The, the one inch shank tools will not work in the Victor lathe. And that's another reason why I'm gonna move the shaft over to the Monarch to uh, cut the Acme thread over there. But I'm gonna be you know, picking up some new tooling for the uh, pacemaker to have down there. And this one was a good opportunity to, uh, to get this guy right here. And I did get the left hand tool. And this is the, um, it's the 54 series insert. So it's the big boy. And I ordered the actual insert made for a, a five pitch Acme thread. Okay, so pull one of these guys out of here so you can see it. Tool Flow brand, made in USA. You see it's a pretty good size insert and that's gonna be made right there for number five Acme thread, okay? There's the tool holder right there. Really good quality stuff. These are made in USA. I believe they're made over in Texas, uh, Tool Flow. And you have a lot of options whenever you have these types of tools like that. Tool, tool Flow is a good source for some of these larger uh, on-edge inserts in different thread profiles, grooving profiles, and even radius tools as well. So, uh, you know, I don't, it's not just a one tool, one insert shot there. I can invest in different types of carbide inserts for this tool and be able to put this to work over there on the pacemaker. Uh, I did not get the right hand just simply because I needed the left hand to get going right now. So I just went ahead and got the left hand. And, uh, and that's what I like to use whenever I'm cutting a left handed threads because you're going you're going from the left side and we're gonna be going to the right. And your pressure should be against that side of the tool there. Most people you'll see whenever they're doing threading, left hand threads, they're using a right handed tool, meaning the inserts over here and they're cutting that way. And there's not anything on the back of the insert except for the clamp there that's supporting it. So that's the proper way to do it if you're gonna do a left hand thread is using a, a left handed tool going from left to right. But anyway, new tool for the shop. Wanted to share that. Some good quality stuff that Tool Flow makes. And um, hopefully this is going to get the job done uh, good for us. Now, alternatively, let me move this over and show you. You do not have to have a carbide insert to do Acme threads. This is out of my granddad's toolbox right here. And this is where uh, not only he, but my dad used to uh, put the Acme tools, you know, and I've used them many times over the years as well. So you just, you, you'll have to have you a good Acme gauge, just like this guy right here. This is a nice Starrett, uh, 29 degree screw thread tool gauge, but for Acme. And it has, you see all the different numbers up there. So use this gauge right here to grind, to hand grind, or if you want to use a tool grinder, your Acme tool out of a piece of high speed steel. And this is what, this is what many people have done throughout the years. So you'll grind the tip of the tool to match so there's the number five right there. So the width of the tool should match the width of the groove up there uh, for that thread pits designation. And then you have this gauge here that you can use to make sure that you have your tool ground properly there. And you also have one there that you can use. You can put this up against your workpiece and use this to square up your tool against your workpiece there. All right. So another good way to do it for you guys that are learning about this shop work and you're trying to do this stuff yourself, pick you up one of these Acme thread gauges right here. They're not very expensive. You can probably get them used off eBay and some inexpensive high speed tools and practice, practice grinding these right there. And you got you some Acme tools. All right. So, but we're going to go with the carbide insert for this job. Let's go down here and get her set up. Went ahead and got the insert loaded up into the tool there and one of the other things I wanted to mention is another reason why I like using these whenever it's possible is if I end up chipping or, or breaking this insert, 
the tool is in the same location. It's not like when you got to have a high speed tool clamped in the tool holder, you got to take it out and sharpen it or grind it, and then you got to line it back up with your existing thread. In most cases, as long as your tool post doesn't move, if this thing snaps, is that all you got to do is just take this in this insert, index it around, or stick another one in there, clamp it, and it should be in the exact location of when you were cutting your thread in the event that this thing snaps. And it, and it is likely to snap or break during the uh, machining process, but uh, we'll just have to see if we're going to get through without having to worry about that. But anyway, there it is. It's a good looking tool. I really like that. All right, we're getting set up in the Monarch here. Get this guy indicated. Now I am chucked straight into the, the jaws here, as in making full contact. I'm gonna, I'm gonna indicate this and see if it's got it in a pinch or something because sometimes when you're chucking a long piece like this, it'll actually kind of have it cocked one way or the other and then it's forcing this to run out on this end. In that case, you just put some pads <clears throat> there on your jaw so that you have a narrow contact point. We'll just indicate it and see what it's gonna do. Loosen your lows, tighten your highs. You're just pushing it to the center. Once you get it close, just tighten your highs and get the slack out of the, the jaws. And notice I am indicating the area that we're gonna thread. Try to get that as true as possible. Half a thou. Too far a half a thou. That's pretty good right about there. Let's see what we what we look like. Gotta turn the power on first. We got a little run out down here on this end. And it could have been on me too. <clears throat> it probably moved on me after all that turning. We'll put the center in there and see what it does. All right, we've got our center in there, tail stock tight. I'm getting a little bit. So we're getting about a thousandths to a thousandths and a half there. And that's gonna be, we're just gonna run with that. I think this is gonna work out good right where it's at. So a couple other things to note since we're cutting our Acme thread, I've got the compound swung clockwise to the left since we're cutting a left-handed thread. If you were cutting a right-hand thread, you would turn it the other way. Uh, I do have it set on 14 degrees. Uh, some people tell you put it on 14 and a half, the books might say 14 and a half. I put it on 14 so that the tool, the uh, left side of the, of the cutting tool will help clean the thread as we're, as we're machining it. We also have the compound indicated, so we've got, we've got our tool right here loaded up in a tool holder. And what I have done, let me back this out so I don't land on the tool. Put an indicator here against your tool. Run your cross, uh, cross slide in and out. I like to make sure that my tool is perfectly square to the workpiece right there. So I always indicate my tools nice and square. So I believe that's about it. We're about ready to uh, get started on this. This is what I'm talking about. Squaring up your tool right here. Use a dial indicator to make sure that your tool is nice and straight and square. You're not at an angle. You want your tool to be square to your workpiece. Also wanted to show you, I've been down here uh, figuring out all of the the, uh, the numbers that I'd like to see for the thread that we're cutting, which is, uh, you know, five threads per inch Acme, okay? So I'm using the machinery's handbook to get this information. So this is page 1349, and I am using the 20th edition. This is the one that I just keep out here in the box. Um, and this chart right here, you've got all these charts right here that's gonna give you all of your information that you need to know or figure out for whatever it is you're cutting. This chart right here, table number five, is gonna have all of your class classifications from 2G to 5G, all of your uh, threads per inch in here, I'm sorry, diameters. This will help figure out your pitch diameter tolerances. 
But this chart right here, table number 2A, if you go through this and, and do what it's saying for the formulas here, this will give you all your information that you need to know for the thread that you're trying to cut. So I've gone through here and that's just exactly what I've done. You know, everything from our major diameter, nominal size to our pitch. In our case, our pitch is 200 thousandths. Figure out your pitch is easy. You just take one divided by the, the um, number of threads, in our case it's five, equals 0.2. And then once you have that info, you can go through this chart and figure out everything that you need to know. Your, uh, your pitch diameter, uh, minor diameter, pitch diameter max, pitch diameter minimum, minor diameter maximum, minor diameter minimum, and I've also even got your pitch diameter tolerance for both a 2G and 5G fit. I think this is all right right here. I don't do this stuff very often, and when you're not, when you're not doing this type of machining and threading on the daily basis or even the weekly basis, maybe even the monthly basis, you kind of forget this stuff and you have to go back in the book and reread it and refresh your memory on how to figure out these numbers. And some of this stuff isn't really, you don't have to know all this stuff. You can certainly go to the lathe, set the tool in there, start cutting, using a gauge like we're doing to check that. But it's good to refresh your memory on the mathematics that is involved with figuring an acme thread. And that's just what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to refresh myself and be familiarized with the numbers that we're trying to hit on our screw. We want a, we want a, a tight fit between our our lead screw and our nut, and that's what I'm gonna be shooting for here, okay? So anyway, I just wanted to kind of point this out. If you're trying to learn this stuff too, get your machinery's handbook, open up to this page, and just start reading this and figuring it out. You know, just write down a, a random size that you wanna figure and go through the formulas and do the, uh, the formulas that it's, in which it's telling you and figure this stuff out. And that's a good way to learn and understand more about an Acme thread or any thread for that matter. We've got our tool touched off there. Also note on this end here, I turned this down to our minor diameter. You can use this as an indicator whenever you come across and it touches, you know, you're gonna be very close. So let's, uh, let's give it a scratch and make sure I'm on the right pitch. going to back out we're going to use this guy right here Acme thread gauge and it's looking like it's lining up on five so I think we are ready to go here go back into our zero and let's uh, let's make a cut looking good. I'll try to get you a nice tighter shot than that.
one of the features I love using on my Monarch is that you have a solid stop there made for threading. So you have this, this pin here that you engage and this sets your zero for your cross slide. So whenever you back out the tool and you go back in, it comes to a positive stop. So your tool is gonna to end up in the same position every time, back on zero. And then you use your, comp your compound for your end feed there. Got to be quick. It's a coarse thread, so it's easy to miss the uh, dial if you don't line it up right. I'm not going to say I have not done that. Disengage, retract the tool, bring it back down to your thread relief. Go in a little bit more on your top slide and get ready to engage. So I'm engaging on any number, one, two, three, or four. So basically every other line. We're getting there nice and easy. I'm just taking about five thousandths of pass there so we can just kind of sneak up on our on our uh, minor diameter that we're going to finish out at.
sip of coffee. happening it seems to me like it's trying to pick itself up and pull itself up on top of the tool there to me that's I think that's what's happening it's only in that one spot isn't it well it's because it's getting further away from the rigidity here of the chuck yeah. it's out here it's not supported very much it's got my thread screwed up now it's not going to be very pretty This has turned into a really unfortunate machining op for me and it's actually a complete screwed up mess now and really frustrated at this machine on what what is happening here because there's no reason for it to be doing what it's doing you know i'm taking i'm coming by and i'm just i've already the thread's already screwed up so i already know i'm going to be making another one but i'm just continuing on with this so i can try to figure out what my depth is and how it's going to turn out you know, so I'm taking two thousandths a pass, come down, I'm just trying to clean it up, two thousandths, two thousandths. And then I come in and take another pass here, and all of a sudden it just digs in. It's like it just sucks the tool up in there and it digs in and it just chews it all up. And it should not be doing that. And I'm trying to figure out, that's why I'm continuing to, to just mess with it and cut with it. I'm trying to figure out what the machine is doing. And I can't figure out exactly there's a lot of variables on what ifs, this or that, but I'm not quite sure yet. But it's really frustrating, and there's no reason that that should have happened right there. Just like that last pass, I mean, just dug in. You know, you're basically right on your finished pass, because I've been checking it with the, with the nut here, and I had it where it was trying to screw on, but you could tell it was tight. So, you know, a few more thousandths, and it should be out of there. And then all of a sudden, instead of just taking a couple thousandths, the tool just digs in, and it just removes a whole bunch of material. Now when I go back in there with the tool, it's not to the depth that it was when it dug in. So it's something's moving, there's, there's something happening here. It's pulling it in, it's not staying consistent. So the Monarch has completely let me down on this job right here and I'm really disappointed in it. And I already know I'm gonna order some material and we're gonna try it again. I think on the next one though, I'm not coming back to the Monarch since it let me down. We might just turn it and machine it right here on the Victor. Well, the machining of the uh, lead screw there didn't quite go as planned. I'm definitely having some issues here with the, uh, the Monarch lathe. Very unfortunate. Uh, this, this machine's always been very reliable for me. 
Uh, but it has been quite a while. I can't even remember the last time I've cut some coarse threads over here. It's been, it's been quite a while. But it's, it's doing something, and I can't pinpoint exactly what's happening here yet. I really don't know, but there's a lot of what-ifs and could-bes and uh, issues that might be uh, causing problems. So it seems like the tool doesn't want to line up perfectly every single pass. Now you saw most of the passes it was doing great, but then sometimes you come in there and it's like either the tool gets sucked in too far and it starts digging in, or it's trying to cut heavy on the left side of the tool, meaning that the lead screw here doesn't seem to be perfectly engaged in sync every single time. And whether that's the problem or not, I'm not sure. I'm just suspecting that that's like could be one of the issues here because there was cuts where once we got to about halfway point, it started cutting very heavy on the left side, digging in, okay? So instantly screws your thread up. So I don't know if it's, if I've got too much backlash in the lead screw here for your cross slide. I know that this needs attention. You know, it hasn't been messed with in probably decades, honestly. But I don't know if I have an, another issue dealing with the lead screw with the quadrant gears or something not staying sync like it should be while you're doing this. Honestly, I don't know. But I really don't want to chance it again coming over here and trying to machine another lead screw and dealing with the same problem. I think what I'd like to do is go to another lathe to do this right here. And what I was thinking, we could very well come over here to the Victor lathe and cut it over here. I feel like it would be a good machine to do that. But I think what I would really rather do is let's go use our Precision Matthews lathe. We've got a brand new lathe at the new shop. I have not used it yet. And one of the main reasons I have not used that is because I don't have my tool post mounted on it yet. I've been just kind of waiting for the right opportunity to work on that project. So I think what I would like to do is pause on this right now. I've got material ordered. I ordered some 12014 and some stress proof from uh, McMaster Car. So it'll be here in a day or two. But um, let's pause on this. And I want to go ahead and get my tool post mounted on the Precision Matthews. I have another one of these multi-fix type of uh, tool posts that a viewer had given me some time back, probably a couple years ago. And I've got it all cleaned up now. I cleaned up all the tool holders. And it's all just sitting there waiting for me to get it mounted onto the, uh, the, tool, the uh, compound, I mean, and get it mounted on the lathe. So I think I'm going to work on that project now. Go ahead and start getting that worked on, get it mounted. And once I do, we should be ready to do some machining in the Precision Matthews lathe. And then uh, once I get my material in and get the compound on, the uh, tool post, let's use the Precision Matthews to machine another lead screw and see how that lathe will do, you know, compared to my issues that I'm dealing with right here. All right, so I think that's what I'm gonna jump on. Let's start getting the tool post mounted on that Precision Matthews lathe. I'll probably show you a little bit of that project as well. But um, mainly when I bring you guys back, I'd like to uh, get back on the lead screw, let's get another one of these machines for our uh, American pacemaker. All right, 